day of diving into simulation in 20 minutes. Okay, well, let's get started today. Um, good morning. My name is Bill Baker. I'm your host today for the session on Simulation Mechanical and Simulation 3D from Autodesk. This is the fourth in a series of uh, relevant webinars D3 has put together. We hope that you'll gain some benefit by it. I want to thank you for attending this D3 simulation webinar. We appreciate respect your time this morning. This webinar will be approximately uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Due to the nature of simulations, though, you'll be presented with a number of screenshots on setups in order we can spend a little bit more time on the results. With the high number of attendees and short time frame, we will provide you a means at the end of the session to follow up with you regarding questions. Uh, we ask you to take any note of any questions as you go along. There will be three short questions at the end, uh, in, including one where you can request a representative from D3 to follow up with you on any further questions you may have. Um, however, let's start with a uh, poll question that um, uh, let's see if I can get that to you. Hopefully you see a couple of uh, items. Uh, we're going to ask you uh, we're going to ask you um, what type of products you're currently using. And I see some people already looking at it. That's good. We appreciate that. Uh, it just gives us a background of who, uh, who we're connecting with today. All right. So let's get started. I have an agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about a problem definition. We're going to take a look a little bit at an analysis workflow. Uh, we're going to briefly go into some of the simulation setups as we go through this workflow. Um, we're going to take a look at the results. We'll try to do that live. Uh, we're going to do multiple design studies uh, as we go along. And as soon as we get through those multiple design studies, we'll try to put together some results draw some conclusions, and then have a wrap-up session at the end. So that's our agenda today, and we uh, appreciate um, we appreciate your input there. Okay, here's our real-world problem for today, and I came from an industry where we built cranes, and cranes have to be lift have to be able to lift loads in all kinds of conditions. Since they are mobile, they go all kinds of job sites, many of them outdoors, and therefore wind loads can be a condition that might just halt a lift. But the real world question is, how do we to determine how much wind is too much? So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, if you were to export a crane to Europe, you would have to designate on that crane what is the wind limit it could be used in. So this is uh, actual calculations that are being done. And I can tell you, I wish I had some of these tools when I was doing this kind of work. So let's look at an analysis workflow. Um, there will be a number of steps here, but we'll uh, keep it simple. We're going to start with an inventor model. Our first step is to move that to our sim mechanical solver, do our problem setup, 
And when we're happy with the setup, we'll push run. And then our second step, we'll be able to look at that first design study, look at the results. And in our case, we're going to do a vertical download only just to get, kind of get a baseline. Uh, once we've established that, we're going to take a look at uh, now moving this same inventor model. Now we're going to move it to the simulation CFD solver. We're going to do our setups. That's step number three. Once we're happy and we push run, we're going to get some results. So step four will be to look at the CFD study results. Now this will be a case where we have wind only on the boom. And it's, uh, essentially, we're going to be setting up a wind tunnel uh, with our boom stuck in the middle of it. Our fifth step will be take that study results, move that to back to our sim mechanical solver, and do some setups uh, and do a second design study push go or push run, and our sixth step will be to look at that second design study results. Now these results will be for wind loads only on the boom in a structural FEA analysis. Once we're happy with that uh, second design study, we'll take our seventh step, which is basically to combine the first two design studies for a wind plus vertical load. Uh, okay, I'm uh, hearing that we can't see my screen anymore. Um, let's make sure that hopefully that works. So we have a seven-step process on our workflow starting with the inventor model, getting a first design study, then use the same model through a CFD solver, ended up with a second design study, and then combining those two to make a third design study which will combine our wind and vertical loads. So hopefully that's clear to everybody. All right, let's take a look at our model. Uh, it's an inventor model. It's been uh, simplified. Uh, what we're trying to do is take out any unnecessary details uh, that might cause hiccups in the simulation. You can see this is a simple four-plate boom design. Um, it is a weldment. You'll see actual welds in and around members. Um, this is a boom that's 30 foot long. I've simplified it by not making it uh, telescoping. It's just one long boom stick. You have a pivot point in the back and a cylinder, um, topping cylinder mount uh, to raise and lower the boom. And we'll have a lifting eye basically to apply a load at the end of the boom. So that's our model that we're going to start with. Now, um, within our sim or excuse me, within our inventor model, we have the ability to launch directly into sim mechanical by just pushing this button. So, with the model up and live in inventor, we can go directly into sim mechanical. Once we do that, now we're in a sim mechanical environment. We're going to set up a baseline study, and we're going to apply gravity. Uh, we're going to apply a downward force at that lifting lie lug. We're going to set up our constraints at the pivot point and the cylinder topping mount. And notice here, we have the ability to add fluid reactions, but we're not going to do it on our base study. So this will be vertical load only. In this case, we'll apply 5,000 pound downward load. 
and we'll hit our run. And now we have a chance to look at results. So we're in sim mechanical now. Let's take a live look. Uh, sim mechanical um, gives you the ability to look at deflections. Here is our boom. As you can see, as I rotate it around, um, as you would expect your displacements, the max would be at the end of the boom, and as uh, of course, it uh, less and less deflections as you get back towards the cylinder mounts uh, where we have fixed things. We can also look at, I'll take a notice at the magnitude, um, 3.69 approximately for just applying a vertical load down. We can also take a look at our von Mises stresses. And here with our design, with that vertical load, we're approaching just under 40,000 uh, PSI with this load for a max value, 39.2. So here we have results uh, from our vertical load only. And uh, so we've got through two steps already in our process. Let's uh, move on. Our third step is going to move the model from Inventor into simulation CFD. Here again, in the Inventor model environment, you have a button to launch the active model directly into simulation CFD. So it's a pretty simple task. When we're in the uh, CFD environment, we're going to use the uh, setup tools to go set our geometry, which will help us define our actual wind tunnel. Of course, we're going to set up our materials. Uh, the fluid, of course, will be air. Uh, we're going to set up our boundary conditions. We're going to have the wind enter one side of our wind tunnel and exit the other. We're going to set the velocity going in and uh, a zero pressure coming out. We're going to mesh the model and solve it. So step four now, we're going to review our CFD results. So let's go live. And here in our CFD environment, we've got uh, wind velocities. In this case, uh, we're looking at a 60 mile an hour wind. Um, and here is our box that we've put our boom in. Now keep in mind this is a 30-foot boom inserted in a pretty large box. The air moving through there, we can see that we've got uh, not only 60 mile an hour winds moving through there, we can actually see the direction. So you can actually get an idea of the arrows. And this tells you that the wind is at the back of the boom. Uh, I set it up this way just to see if this would add to our vertical load. So any wind that catches the back of the boom, of course, would then add to the uh, overall moment that you have with hanging a weight at the end of the boom tip. So we're taking a look at uh, seeing if the wind in this direction at this velocity will have an impact on our structures. Now, while we're in our CFD environment, there's a number of things we can do. We just looked at the velocity, uh, direction, and magnitude. Uh, we have a cutting plane that we can put in here. And as you see, the wind is going be, uh, back behind the boom at 60 miles an hour. And as you come to about the point where it cuts through the boom, you can now see that in that area, or that cross-section, the 60 mile an hour wind on the back of the boom is uh, flowing around it and we have much uh, slower wind in the neighborhood of 30, even down in some areas below 20 miles an hour um, behind the boom. So 
this is kind of neat to see how the pressures, um, we can even look at our, our flow vectors again, uh, how it's moving around the boom. Uh, we can also take a look at uh, static pressure, and this simply um, switches our legend over here. And at this point, you can actually see uh, both positive and negative static pressure. And as we kind of zoom in, you can see how it starts to build up on the surface. And on the underside is much lower. So these are all um, proofs that you know we have some impact uh, with the boom in our wind tunnel. And it's kind of neat to do and play with that. Uh, but now we have our results from CFD. So now we're going to move on. Uh, once we have those results, we can now, in our step five, return to our FEA. We can now add a force to our boom study through our CFD results. We choose fluid reactions, go in and choose our file, our CFD study file. And that ends up adding a fluid reaction in addition to gravity and the vertical downforce. Now, one of the things we're going to do is uh, in our setup, for the second run, we're making it a second run um, design study. We are going to reduce the surface force down to almost negligible. So we're going to make it a negative 10 pounds basically an empty hook condition. And we're going to rerun the FEA simulation with this fluid reaction in place. So let's take a look at that real quick. Um, so notice our stress level is uh, less. It's not anywhere near 40,000 but we wouldn't expect uh, the wind to put as much of value on that. And uh, let's see here. We can take a look at displacements. We can see that it's not near three inches. It's about a little over an inch and a quarter. Uh, but again, it's at the tip where we would expect it. And we can at least see that there is some impact of the wind on our boom structure. And that's good news because now when we combine them, we know we're combining something together with their, our initial base run. So let's um, so that was step six. Now we have our results. We're going to set up a third run. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned that our mesh and constraints really haven't changed. We've changed our forces. And for this third run, we're going to go back to our surface force, our vertical load, and change it back to the negative 5,000 pounds down. And now we're going to rerun our simulation based on having the fluid reactions that we've just looked at plus the 5,000 pounds down and see what happens. And so let's look at uh, our results. Now we've got 42,000 PSI max in our our von Mises, and our deflections now, instead of 3.62, we're up to 3.93. So the combined loads have definitely impacted the boom deflection and stress levels. Um, so we've been able to now uh, do three design studies and show how the wind has impacted this boom in the air. So let's look at quickly some results. Um, 
we started with a 3.69 deflection with just a vertical load and about 39,000 psi, no wind in consideration. If we added um, 120 mile an hour wind, which would be a pretty good gust of wind, hurricane style maybe, uh, but reduced our load to basically an empty hook we could see that that wind alone is going to generate some deflection and some stress, but uh, nothing near where it will be when it's loaded. So now we're going to combine those two. And here at the bottom, we see that we've got now 3.9 inches of deflection, 42,000 PSI with a combined load. Now that's really our study. Um, This has our, been our workflow, a fairly simple seven-step process. Um, so what can we conclude? The wind loads did come across. We had some impact on our FEA with an empty hook. First two loadings came from separate simulations. Uh, one was in FEA, one was in CFD. And we used a third design scenario to combine the two loads. Now this is my engineering disclaimer here. Uh, obviously to solve this real world problem, we should be doing this repeatedly for different boom angles, different wind velocities, different directions. Um, in order to establish what exactly is the worst case scenarios, so that when we go to rate our boom capacity and rate it relative to wind velocities, uh, we can determine that through worst case scenarios. Um, so um, the answers that I've got to our initial question uh, looks like we have of inventor users modeling only. We have about 60% of you. Inventor users with models in FEA, we have 47% of you. Simulation mechanical users, we have about 7% of you. And now looks like we've got uh, about 20% of CFD users. And I've got 13% of other simulation products. So pretty good cross-section. Um, like to see that. Now, we've got just a few moments left. Um, just to wrap up quickly, uh, we've used models. Uh, we used the same model for both loadings, both types of simulations came from the same software families. They were different simulations, but we were able to relate them or link them. And hopefully today we've been able to uh, showcase the ease of use of these products. Okay, I'm um, going to get to where we um, got some additional questions here. Let me try to launch those for you. Uh, first of all, let's um, hopefully you can see that screen. Um, we're looking for, was this webinar a good use of your time? And I uh, got some response there. Let's look at our next question. Um, how about the topic? Uh, or would you be interested in some others? OK. Looking good. All right, final question. Would you like a D3I representative to contact you any further? Any questions you might have? Well, it was enjoyable. I uh, like doing this kind of thing, and hopefully uh, it's you can see some relation to the types of things you're doing. So um, glad to hear it.
I'm glad you could join us, and uh, looks like most of you uh, have uh, done our final poll. So we would just want to thank you for taking the time. I like to say, or what somebody told me one a long time ago, all you got to do is famous last words. So appreciate everybody being there. And uh, we hope to see you later. Thank you.